What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of Mike's Motorbikes. So today is going to be a part two of mini truck maintenance. This thing has been sitting here for quite a while not running or it runs I just haven't started it. And last time I was messing with it the valve sounded a little loud it's down on power a little. So I think today we're going to do a valve adjustment which I have no idea how to do and there's no information online or very little information online. No YouTube videos how to do it. So I figured I'll go ahead and make a YouTube video and you guys can learn with me on how to get the job done. First, let's see if this thing even fires up. It's been sitting here for probably, I'd say two months since the last time I touched it. So this is gonna be a, a real life cold start video for you guys. We got her all pulled out of the parking spot and the first thing we're going to want to do is pull this back panel off. Aha! We have an engine and a carburetor and it looks like what we're after is going to be on this side so here is the valve cover looks like we have some spark plug wires tied onto there some vacuum lines routed to it and over it and this big vacuum line right here and a couple wires so we're gonna to have to get all that out of the way and pop the valve cover off but also i'm going to make sure all this pine needles and dirt and junk is out of the way so none of it falls into my engine once I take the valve cover off. Alright so I got the cover off. You can hear my valves tapping away. Everything I read said to adjust the valves hot so I'm going to get this thing nice and hot and idle here for a little bit and then we're going to tear into it. Here's a better example of the valves. You can't really hear it much at idle but the fans on so that means we are at temperature so I am gonna shut it down and start taking this apart so we're gonna pull the four valve cover bolts out I'm gonna try and do this quickly as it's very cold out here don't want the engine to cool down before I get a chance to adjust the valve so let's do this quickly you may want to wear gloves or something because the oil is probably gonna be scolding hot in there I can already tell by how hot this bolt is and I'm gonna get this valve cover off and I'll get back to you guys right the four bolts are off Get this valve cover off. Nice and scolding hot. I wish they had cold valve adjustment specs, but I could not find any. And even the ones I found for hot were debatable because there was a bunch of different sites that said different things. So now what we're gonna do is I already pulled this rubber plug off of here. So you're gonna go to the front, you need a helper and you're gonna turn that 19 millimeter bolt on the crankshaft pulley until you line up the timing marks in here. I don't have a helper, so I don't recommend doing this, but this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna turn the flywheel like this. So you wanna turn the engine towards the passenger side, and of course it's right-hand drive. So we're gonna get the engine turned, and there is a timing mark right there. Let me see if I can get a better view for you guys right there you're gonna line up with there's another mark that says zero on those notches right now it's at 10 degrees so it's got to turn a little bit more and you line that mark up and now we should be able to adjust some of our valves and we'll have to repeat that so that's really 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 hot all right so with our mark lined up and this scenario we have two valves we can adjust one intake one exhaust and then when you go another revolution line that mark back up you'll do the other four so I have found our problem valve and here it's very loose without even measuring it but the spec for the intake I found is 0 0.009 and as you can see that has no resistance at all so what we're gonna do is loosen this 12 millimeter nut 
without stripping it. Get that loosened up. You don't want it too loose because then your valve adjustment process is gonna be harder. I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it up a little. This is gonna be very hard with one hand. So I'm gonna do it like this. Stick the feeler gauge in there. I think I actually went a little too tight. Yeah. If you're using both hands, this will be way easier. I'm kind of just going to have to guess until I get it in there. But what you want is for it to have a nice amount of drag. Like, that's even a little too loose. You don't want to have to shove it in there hard, but you want some resistance. So let me see if we can do this with one hand. Get this a little tighter. Let's see how that feels. Yeah, that's what we're looking for right there. Now let me see about tightening this without that flathead moving. You're going to want to put the screwdriver in there. But again, you're going to be doing it with both hands. Let's see. Yeah, now that's nice and tight. It has nice resistance. And I like where that's at. So as you can see, that valve is a lot quieter now. It is right in spec. I'll show you guys. Again, you want it to drag. See how that's dragging? I mean, obviously you can't feel it through the camera, but hopefully you guys could see that. Now we're gonna check the other valve, which is this one, and the spec for that was, I believe, 0 .001. So I'll do that off camera just because it's easier. Then we'll rotate the engine, and I'll show you guys the other four. So I went ahead and marked my timing mark with a purple dot. I moved it a little just so you guys could see it, but that's gonna make this a lot easier. And then, like I said, you should be turning it from the pulley with a helper. But this is my only option right now, so I'm just going to slowly turn the engine until that purple mark comes around again. And I'll show you guys what that looks like when it does. All right, so we got it rotated back to the purple dot. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's there. And now the two valves we did are going to be tight because they're engaged in the camshaft. Sorry, this one and this one. And the other one, two, three, four are going to be loose now. So this one is the obvious loose one. You can hear it. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that. The rest seem to be in spec, but I will double check them anyway. And I'll get back to you guys. All right, I got my phone propped up here. I'm going to try and show you guys what this would look like with two hands. So to loosen it, I'm just going to use the box ratcheting side. So I'm wrist stripping it. All right, we got that loose. We're going to put the feeler gauge in. Yeah, that valve's way too loose. Okay, and then we're going to take our flathead and adjust it until there's a nice amount of tension on that feeler gauge. I'm going to leave it in. Then we're going to hold the screwdriver so that tap it flathead part can't spin. Now let's see how we did. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Nice and tight on that feeler gauge. A lot of resistance. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and check the rest of them. And then we'll see where we're at. All right, I am happy where everything is at. So now the next step is going to be reinstall the valve cover. Just keep in mind how you took it off with these on the bottom and this on top. Also, you want to make sure you don't pinch any spark plug wires or vacuum lines in between the valve cover and the engine. It's going to be quite difficult with one hand. All right, I got the valve cover screwed back on. Do not go too tight with these. They're going into an aluminum head. It will strip very easily. So what I did was I just tightened them all in a sequence, a little tighter, a little tighter, a little tighter until I kind of just until it felt tight with two fingers and that's good they were actually very loose when i took them off so they're a little bit tighter now then we could go ahead and start putting stuff back together All right, and everything's back together. So let's fire this thing up, see what it sounds like. So I'm not sure if you guys can hear this through the video or not. This thing is running a thousand times better. It's now purring like a kitten. 
We have very, very, very little engine noise. You can hear them start to chatter a little bit on throttle, but from what I read, that's normal on these. So there is almost no information on these trucks online. So I based everything I did off of what I know about engines and we got it running good. You can hear once that cover's on, that engine is quiet. All you hear is my exhaust now. So 1994 Daihatsu High Jet, 660cc valve adjustment in the books. There you go, bada bing, bada boom. Like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching.